In the last video, we looked at using BibTeX to add bibliographies into our documents. In this video, we'll look at inserting tables and matrices. To insert tables in LaTeX, we use the tabular environment. So let's add in our begin and end commands. Immediately following the begin tabular command, we need to tell LaTeX the column specifications. There are a few key characters we use to do this. Firstly, a lowercase l specifies a left justified column, a lowercase r specifies a right justified column, and a lowercase c specifies a centered column. In my example, I'm going to specify six columns. The first and last will be left justified and the rest will be centered. To put vertical lines between the columns, we can use the bar symbol and place it in between the letters where we want the lines to appear. When entering the table's contents, we start each row on a new line, separate column entries using an ampersand, and finish each row, except the last, with a double backslash. Now to add horizontal lines, we use the hline command. To make a double horizontal line, simply use the command twice. One potential problem with this table is that if I add a long line of text into one of the cells in the final column, it will sprawl off the page. To fix this, there is another option we can use when declaring column specifications. It is a lowercase p followed by a width in centimetres in curly brackets. So if I change the final L in the declaration to a p with 5 centimetres, you will see the text has been wrapped so that the final column's width is 5 centimetres. So that's the basics of writing tables. However, just like with images, we often want more control over positioning and we may want to add a caption and label. To do this, we use an environment called table, which is similar to the figure environment we used for images. To put our existing table in the table environment, we simply enclose the code in begin table and end table commands. We can then set the position specifier using a combination of ht B, P, and exclamation mark. I can also add a caption and label. We will now briefly look at matrices as they use similar syntax as tables. At this point, make sure you've loaded the AMS math package. Before we add a matrix, we need to tell LaTeX that we are about to add some maths by opening an environment. We could use the equation environment as we did a few videos ago. However, here we'll use the display math environment as it has nice LaTeX shorthand. This means instead of using a begin command, we can use a backslash and open square bracket. And instead of using an end command, we can use a backslash and close square bracket. Matrices can be inserted using the matrix environment. With matrices, we don't need to declare how many columns we use. We can simply start adding the entries. Again, we enter each row on a new line, separate entries using an ampersand, and separate rows using a double backslash. To change the brackets surrounding the matrix, we can change the environment. The P matrix environment uses parentheses. The B matrix uses square brackets. B matrix with a capital B uses curly brackets. 
V matrix uses vertical lines. And V matrix with a capital V uses double vertical lines. Finally, we'll finish this video with a more interesting matrix. What we are doing in this example is nesting matrices inside another matrix. So what we actually have here is a 2x2 two two matrix built with the P matrix environment, where the top left and bottom right entries are also matrices, this time built with the matrix environment to avoid multiple brackets. This concludes our discussion on tables and matrices. In the next video, we'll look at composing larger documents.